I'm actually here, here to present, uh, I'm filling the shoes of Mike Davis, our CFO. It's not gonna be an easy task because he has been working in the company for since inception. Yeah, I have been working in the company, uh, I will say almost three years, and I live in Colombia for two years, what you guys can leverage about that. I speak, I'm from South America, and I really, really recommend that you guys take um, a presentation because I speak pretty fast. <laughs> The forward-looking statements, as you guys can read it later on at the end of the presentation, I'm gonna give you a couple minutes for that one. I wanna talk right now about Grand Colombia and why Grand Colombia and what, why this is a great time to talk about the company. This is a great time to talk about the company, the company and actually the country is because Grand Colombia, we have a record year with 218,000 ounces in 2018, we have two properties. As you can see in there, we have the Segovia property that it accounts to 90% of our production. And in the right side, you have the Marmato project that actually accounts to 10% of our production. Segovia produced in 2018 around 190,000 ounces. It's a high grade mine. It's, it produced, right now it's like, it's a high-grade mine and it produces a high-grade uh, gold, 17.1, and it's considered one of the highest uh, grade underground mines in the world. If you go to Marmato, Marmato is a lower grade, it's 2.7, it produced in 2018 around 25,000 ounces, and it's considered one of the top 20 undeveloped global gold deposits in the world. In the bottom of the, of the slide, you can read that we just raise and increase our, our production guidance for this year, to 225 to 240 for, for 2019. The management, we consider that we have the right management for this project and for, for Colombia. The management has a lot of, management and director has a lot of experience in Colombia and in Venezuela. Lombardo Paredes, we can fully credit, is the CEO of the company, he started with us in 2014, and we can fully credit for the turnaround and the change in the strategy of the company. Mike Davis, as I said, is the CFO, is actually the head of the investor relation and he worked with me and he has been in the company since inception. Then you have Alessandro Secchi that is the one, the VP of exploration and is the one in charge of most of the, of all the drilling that we have done in the past in Marmato and most of the drilling that we have done in, in Segovia. We have a couple new mine managers, Angel Mesa and Inivaldo Diaz, both of them coming from a larger mining operation. What we, what we try to achieve with those hires is actually to bring the skill set and the knowledge to an old operation like Segovia, and those guys are bringing all the skills and training that the workers are gonna need in there. Gabriel Gaviria, he has been operating and uh, he has been the manager of Marmato for years, and what is good about him, he has kept a mine that is a low-grade mine he has kept the cost under management and actually the mine is self-financing, what is good. What's new, the, in the last 12 months, or in the trailing, trailing 12 months, we have produced 230,000 ounces. And the market capitalization, after we did some changes in our capital structure, we saw that the increase in the share price, around a 50% increase in the share price in the last year. Why we don't feel that it's going and that's it. Actually, we feel if we compare with the three analysts that are covering the firm, we're only about 70% of the targets of those analysts. The other thing that is really good is actually we start paying and it's more like a routine, the gold link notes. We announced the gold link notes last year and from 98 millions that we got, uh, that we got and we had as a, as a debt in the gold link notes, last year, we took it down to 70 to 78, and at the last day of this month, we're gonna take it to 74. The cash position in the company has increased in the time too. In the, at the end of the first quarter, it was around 40 million. We see that the future growth of the company is not only in Segovia. I'm gonna talk more about the properties, but it's not only in Segovia, but we can see that even that in Segovia, we have 24 new known beans that we can go and explore. We see some potential in Marmaro, Sancudo, Sand Spring, and Venezuela if everything changed. The capital structure or the new capital structure right now is 48.8 million common shares. And if you go into the fully diluted count that we have it in the top in there is 68 million shares. That include the warrants, the options of the company, and the convertible debentures. The market cap as 
July 12, it was 206 million. But what I really like about this slide is actually how the company was able to outperform the TSX Global Goal Index in the last year and in the last couple months. This one is a good slide too, because at the end of the day, what we want to actually uh, show is how we have been able to pay the debt month of, uh, quarter after quarter and increase our cash position. This is kind of just giving you the big picture of years after years, how we, were, we have been able to increase the production. In 2014, we were producing around, around 90,000 ounces a year. Right now, we're producing over 230,000 a year. Uh, if you look at the, at the right chart in the right top, you have the EBITDA. The EBITDA of the company, when, we, when actually I started the company, was around 10 million. Right now, the EBITDA for 2018 was around 100 million, and that's what we expect for 2019. The cost of the company, the all-in cost, they were over 1,000 bucks, and now we're taking that cost below around 900. For the first quarter, it was actually, for the first quarter of this year, it was actually 832. The outlook. We raised $20 million that actually is going to use to speed up the expiration in Segovia. We continue the implementation and the optimization in the Segovia mine. Segovia mine is a mine that they have been producing for 150 years. More, most of the production in there was artisanal mining. Uh, we're going to go and we're going to try to explore in the deep part that I'm going to go into details of El Silencio and Providencia. We're going to go and, and execute our exploration campaign that is gonna be 20,000 meters in Segovia. And we're, not, we're gonna complete the PEA, at the, I think the third quarter of this year for Marmaro. We have an investment in Sand Spring and we are looking pretty closely what's gonna happen in Venezuela because we have two properties in there and part of our management and um, directors, they have a lot of connections in Venezuela and they have a lot of experience in Venezuela because they have produced in there before. In here, I go for the properties that we have. Segovia, as I said, it, it accounts to 90% of our production. It has 2.3 2 um, million, uh, million ounces of measure indicated and inferred, and it's a high-grade mine, around 11.7 grams per ton. We booked the first reserve last year that they account to 680,000 ounces, and it's around the same 11.7, 11, 11, grams, 11 grams per ton. The production, as I said before, is around 193,000 ounces, and, and we're gonna keep exploring and ramping up the production in our core producer. We go to Marmaro. Marmaro is a steady production of 25,000 ounces. It's a lower grade between 2.7 to 2.5 grams per ton. It produced 25,000 ounces a year, and it accounts to, it has 8 million, 8 million ounces of measure indicated and inferred resources. It's Segovia. Segovia, what is important to explain is an actually, it's a special title that we have in there. We call it an RPP title. It's, we, as, as far as we're producing in there, we own the land, the surface right, and the mineral rights. In there we have, it's a package of land with 27 veins. We're only producing from three veins in there. Providencia, El Silencio, and Sandra K. Providencia is the oldest and deepest mine that we have in there. El Silencio is the oldest and deepest mine that we have in there. 880 meters going down. It goes up to 47 levels. Right now the company is producing in the level 18 to 28 and grams and and the grades are between six to eight grams per ton. We have some contract miners going and producing in the levels in, in the 48 and in the ones below, and in those actually the levels that the contract miners are getting more than 20 grams per ton material. If we go to Providencia, Providencia is the one, the one bringing, and the, the most of the growth in the last year of the company came from Providencia. We have only 660 meters going down and 16 levels. In there, not only the contract miners of the company is producing, both of them are producing in there, and we're getting material uh, for that, that is more than 20 to 25 grams per ton. Sandra K used to be an old producer mine that we have in there. We shut it down for a couple years, and now it's actually producing 10,000 ounces a year. Um, 
what I was talking about, I can go in the first one, but what I was talking in here, you can see some of the lines of our title in there. As I say, it's 9,000 9, hectares title, 3,000 hectares is the RPP title that we own the land with the 27 veins. The other one is a different title that we have that is the, 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 the CARLA license. What is good in here and is something that we have to kind of explain is most of the drilling that we have done in the past and even before us, it was done in Providencia, El Silencio, and Sandra Kay. This is the first year, that's why we're putting a lot of effort and money into going and stepping out of the mines that we have in there. We're gonna go and take a look what else is the other 24 veins that we have in there and see what is the potential. But at the same time, we're not gonna stop in there and we're gonna look into the deeper part of Providencia and the deeper part of El Silencio because we wanna extend the resources, increase the reserve, and increase the production. Mariadama plan, the processing plan in there is a really old plan that we have in, in Colombia, but we were, I think it's from 1939, but we were able to increase the, the capacity for four, from 400 to 1500 that is right now. The plan, even that is an old plan, is functional, is actually doing, processing all the, all the production coming from Segovia. Um, we last year, in 2017, we put an inside lab that is helping us for all the developing samples to have a quicker turnaround. Years ago, it was a problem because we were sending all the samples to Medellin and it was taking longer. Right now, in order to make decisions, it's way faster because we have that, plan, that inside lab in there. And last time that I went in there, actually, El Chocho tailing facility and the tailing facility was, we were building the tailing facility, but right now the tailing facility is ready. It was still like doing some work, but it's receiving some material. And that facility is gonna be able to receive the material for the next six years. Segovia, when we, as I said, in Segovia, they have been producing for 150 years. We have produced in there, since we got the property, more than one million ounces. But when we got in there, we had, we had different, we have a lot of, of small miners working in there and artisanal miners. We decided that the solution was not going there and saying, you, you guys need to leave. The solution for us was more like, okay, let's work together. They're bringing the material to us, we're helping them. Uh, the government is benefiting from this project because they're getting royalties and taxes and they're getting social benefits. At the end of the day, everybody in the community is happier because of, because this model, and we know that it works because a lot of companies are replicating the same model in there. Marmaro, Marmaro, Marmaro project, as I said, it used to be a large open pit plan, lower grade. We took that one into, even in here we can show it more, uh, better, is we took this one, now we're looking into the underground part. We see that in the underground part, after a few, drills, holes in there in 2017 and 2018 is more potential, it's a higher grade, but we still work uh, waiting for JDS for the PEA to have a better sense of how we're gonna mine in there and the dimensions. What it comes next at the end of the day, in, uh, we're gonna have the second quarter results at the end of the month. We're gonna continue paying the golden notes, as I said, we put some gold aside and we pay every quarter the golden notes. And we're gonna continue with the drilling campaign at Segovia just to see and stepping out of the mines that we already have and increasing production, passing from resources to reserves and waiting for the PEA and Marmato that we feel that it can be a game changer.